of people in our stand here. So, uh, uh, but uh, Wednesday's 31, and uh, we, uh, yeah, woo! Um, so, uh, and uh, uh, just, just continuing to love life. What I want to tell you uh, about this woman is uh, uh, she, uh, she puts up with a lot. Um, so 30th anniversary last year, where was I? Officiating at swimming Olympic trials. 31 this Wednesday, where will I be? Officiating at world championship trials. <laughs> so uh, headed, uh, headed to, I don't know, I don't understand. She didn't want to come to Omaha last year during Olympic trials for her anniversary. I mean, seriously, Omaha, Nebraska, come on. And for some reason, she doesn't want to come to Indianapolis. Uh, uh, you know, big exotic places. So, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a good thing you took me to Hawaii last week. I did take her to Hawaii a couple months ago for that anniversary. So, thank you for loving me in the midst of all that. Love you too. So, who doesn't like a shortcut? I mean, who doesn't go for the shortcut? A couple of, uh, couple of weeks ago, I was uh, at a Reds game. Uh, they, they do something really special since they can't win baseball games. Uh, they, they, they do some other things. Although they did sweep the Cardinals, Brett. I, I just want you to know, I know you're a Cardinals fan. Uh, and, um, and actually, it was, it was at the last Cardinals game, and I was with a pastor who loves the Cardinals. I offered to buy him a... a a uh, commemorative broom uh, on the way out, but he, he didn't he didn't go for it. So uh, so it met a couple of pastors in there, but they the Reds give a clergy pass. Uh, you can you send in a letter beginning of the year, and they only have so many of them, so you got to get it in early. And I can walk up to the ticket window on a game day, and I can get a free ticket um, anywhere but the premium boxes and stuff. So so some pastors we we often uh, try to hit one of those afternoon games. So. You know, went down for this 12:35 game, and I usually, you know, I have my places to park. Everybody's got their places. I don't know where I ended up parking. I don't know, because everything was closed and blocked off, so I'm up like 7th Street and something, and, and took, me, took me quite a long ways to walk. And uh, so on, on, on the way back, I'm thinking, how do I get back to 71? Because I'm over on 75, and maybe I can go this way. I tried a shortcut. Ended up being a long cut. Uh, you know how that that often happens you know closed roads and 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 different things under construction and all this fun stuff who doesn't love a shortcut who doesn't love a shortcut when God says the road to blessing often goes through hardship and difficulty well, why is that why can't it be God says blessing, my blessing comes your way when the road is easy and comfortable and convenient. How come we don't learn stuff on that road? <laughs> That's the road I want. But no, the road to the blessing is on the difficult road. And guess what? Life is difficult. I, I, heard, a, I heard a little thing on a on, uh, radio station. Uh, uh, it was Columbus. We, we, we had uh, grandson Fisher's early second birthday party uh, was, was yesterday. So we were up and back to Columbus and, and uh, there was a pastor that, that came on to give a little advertisement. He said, you know what? Life is hard. <laughs> he almost said, life is hard. Get used to it. <laughs> why, why do we think life should be easy? But God never says the blessings that he wants to give us come, there's a shortcut to them. He says, no, the blessings that I want to give you are a long obedience in the same direction. I keep my eyes on you. Even when everything around me screams, where is God? Even when everything around me says, why is life so hard? Keep my eyes focused on him and on him alone. This is the call of God on our lives. This is, this is what James says as he begins his book. James chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to skip to 12. I, James, am a slave of God and the master Jesus, writing to the 12 tribes scattered to kingdom come. Hello, he says. 
Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed. Don't try to get out of anything prematurely. I don't know about you, but when I get into hard, difficult stuff, I am looking for a way out. I'm trying to find a shortcut. This is too hard, God. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm getting out of it. And James says, don't be so quick. Learn what you need to learn in that circumstance. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> don't put yourself in danger. But learn from it. Don't be too quick to get out of where I have you. This is God's call on our lives. We'll come back to that. Become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. And then verse 12, anyone who meets a testing challenge head-on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate. For such persons loyally in love with God, the reward is life and more of life. So while the iPad is uh, re, uh, rebooting, uh, and I'm looking for a shortcut uh, to uh, get, get back, to, uh, back to where I was, um, we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. So, yeah, she's going to bring, she's gonna bring up my, uh, my notes here. So uh, I'm not smart enough to memorize everything. So uh, awesome. Thanks, Judy. So how do, we, how do we do it? You know, James basically says, along with most of the rest of Scripture, that character matters. Character is important. It doesn't matter how much faith I say I have. What's my character demonstrate? What's my character show? When, when I go into a doctor's office, I want to see that they have completed their degree. <laughs> it tells me this is good. When, when I go into... Uh, 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 some other medical practice, say, I, I don't care what it is, I want to see that they've completed that degree. I want the, the plumber to have some knowledge. I don't want it to be his first day learning the job. Well, God says that character is the plaque on our wall when it comes to faith. Character is the evidence that we have faith. So how do, how do we do what James says? How do we begin to see, isn't she awesome? How do, we, how do we build the kind of character and have the kind of faith through trials and difficulties? How do we have perseverance in life? Here's a couple of thoughts. First of all, be ready for God to work. I, I think being ready for God to work has become so key to me, and I wish I did this every day, but on many mornings, I get up and one of my first thoughts is, God, you're going to be at work today. Help me to cooperate with you. It's not a matter of I have to stir something up. I have to figure it out. No, God's already figuring it out. God opened my eyes to see it. Get ready for God to work. Years ago, uh, I was privileged to be a pastor of a man named Dick Hoy, and uh, uh, Dick had a uh, knee replacement surgery, and it went, well, terribly wrong. Um, he, uh, an infection set in pretty quickly, and so the doctor had to go back in, take the knee out, uh, the, the replacement out, and pack that joint with, uh, with surgical cement. So for six weeks, uh, Dick was straight leg, no knee, and packed with the cement. So he's either in a wheelchair or he's on, yeah, it makes you really want to go for a knee replacement, doesn't it? <laughs> and, and, or, or laying on the bed. And so he's in a rehab facility, and I go see him after, you know, a few days in there. And, uh, and a nurse walks in shortly after I arrive, and, and she goes, we are so thrilled to have Mr. Hoy here with us. He so he's so encouraging 
He wheels himself down every day to somebody else's room just to encourage them. And he's always talking about his faith. Oh, my word. He could have, he could have chosen to be ticked off. I'm, I know he wasn't thrilled. <laughs> but his response was, okay, God, if this is where you have me, how can I be a witness to you? Oh, Lord, give me that faith. <laughs> give me that faith, God. Don't try to get myself out of things too quickly. Let God build my character. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we love to quote, God works in all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. How is it good? Nine years ago, I had a memorable trip to Haiti. Brett decided it was a good idea for our team to go out doing some evangelizing. We were stuck in a mud puddle for two hours. <laughs> while standing in a truck. I reminded him of that a couple of weeks ago. He says, oh, that was you. <laughs> yeah, that was us. Yeah, I'm sure that town is still talking about the gringos that got stuck in the, uh, in the mud puddle. What are you going to do during that time? Are you going to choose to be upset about it? Or are you going to choose to demonstrate faith about it? What about those difficulties you run into? How you doing with that? It, you know, it's, not a, it's not a guilt thing I'm trying to get across. It's just a, it's an encouragement. It's a challenge. We all have things in our lives that irritate us, that we don't like, that are uncomfortable, that are inconvenient, whatever it is. How can I demonstrate faith and allow God to grow my character? See, in order... To persevere, we've got to remember who's in charge. Life is about God, not about me. If life is about God and not about me, it totally changes my perspective. God wants to use me in the things of my life and the struggles and the, the, the trials that happen. Hebrews 13, 8 says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. There are no shortcuts. It's a daily choice to allow God to lead our lives. And it's a daily choice. Sometimes it's a twice or thrice daily choice for God to lead my life. There are no shortcuts. Be ready for God to work. Here's the second idea. Remain in touch. Remain in touch. Here, here's, here's what I mean. James wrote this. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, not, not deficient in any way. This is, the one, this is one of the big reasons for me that, that I think it's so important to stay connected to the poor. Um, putting myself face-to-face -face with desperation and poverty and need is not always fun, but it challenges the direction of my heart. And I know if my heart is, is pointed in that direction and bumps up against the guardrails of, of, of faith, that I'll, I'll continue down the right path instead of looking for a shortcut. I shared with a colleague earlier this week about his impending move uh, to a new church uh, location. And, and he, he said to me, there, there's one thing I'd love to take from the building I'm in. And he said it's an original stained glass window from the original building, now a new facility. Uh, and uh, on, the, on the stained glass, it simply said M period E period church. Now, it stands for Methodist Episcopal Church. Uh, and, and, but they didn't have room for it all. So it's me church. And, and he, he was commenting to me on this window. He, he said, you know, a friend of his came and uh, he was, sh the, the pastor who's moving was showing him around the, the building he just left. And, and he'd never noticed it before. And, and, and his friend said, oh, so church here is all about me? Hmm. 
if life is about me, I'm not going to grow the character that God desires for me. Living a life in the same direction means life is about God. It's not about me. It's about fulfilling the mission of Jesus in the world and how we can be a part of it. Filling my mind with mind and heart with God's word, filling it with, with fellowship, filling it with serving, filling it with prayer. This is how God grows us. God wants me to drill deep in this life so that when drought does come, when things do happen, when stuff comes in and tries to shove me down a, a shortcut, I'll stay connected. I'll stay in touch with him. Now, here's, here's the third thing that comes from verse 12. Be loyal. Be loyal. Anyone who meets a testing challenge head on and manages to stick it out is mighty fortunate for such persons loyally in love with God the reward is life and more life loyalty loyalty is driving to the place that uh, has changed the oil in my cars for 14 years uh, and, and for 10 years and then we moved here and, and we're still driving there past a bunch of other places that would do just as good a job. That's loyalty, right? That's loyalty. And so in May, I took one of the cars uh, over to, uh, to Gateway in Westchester. And, uh, uh, and I walk in, and, uh, and there's big orange, 8.5 by 11, bright orange sheets that say closing. And I'm like, you didn't ask me. <laughs> Horse loyalty here. One-sided. And so Gateway's basically a tire business, but they had this little service side, and they're closing the service side and keeping the, keeping the tire warehouse open. I thought, well, what do I do now? Now, I knew of a place here in Lebanon, Walt Ludy Tire, and I've known about them for years, and I know they're very good, and, and they're very, you know, they'll, they'll make things right, but I was sticking with Gateway. Keep, keep going. This is, this is loyalty. Loyalty is driving further than you need to. To go to somebody that you know and you trust, right? This is, this is loyalty. Because I don't trust myself to change it myself uh, either. This is loyalty. I'm loyal, I'm loyal to some swim teams and, and coaches in, in the Cincinnati area. There's a, there's a couple of coaches that rank pretty high for me and, and, and swim teams. And so if they're hosting a meet, guess what? I'm, I'm probably going to show up and I'm going to officiate a, a session or two for them. Just because that's what you do when, when you're loyal and they treat me well and, and, and they're, loyal, they're loyal to me. Um, guess whose services are our air conditioner and furnace at, at this house in Lebanon? The same one that serviced it in Westchester. Even though three doors down from us in our neighborhood is a guy who owns his own heating and air conditioning business. <laughs> and his, his van's on the driveway every day, and he's a nice guy. Why do I keep going to the other guy? Because I'm loyal. And they're loyal to me. James says those who are loyal to God I think, it, I think it looks the same way. I think it works the same way. No matter what I see going on in front of my eyes, I'm going to remain loyal and stick to what I know about this good father of ours. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Even when everything around me is unstable, I can trust that God is stable and that God is good. I never have to wonder if God's up to something or he's up to no good in my life. He's always up to good in my life. I never have to question his purpose in my life. This is why James says, count it all joy when trials come on you. Everything gets used by God for good things. Everything. And we do tend to learn more from the difficult stuff than we do the easy stuff. Oh, how I wish it wasn't true. 
but it seems to be the way that God has set life up. Be loyal. When things get tough, don't run away from God. One of my favorite images of this loyalty comes out of the book of Habakkuk, a small little uh, prophet uh, book in the Old Testament. Here's what he says in chapter 3. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. So if we were to bring that into you know, everyday vernacular for us, it would be something like uh, the 401k crashed and the uh, roof sprang a leak uh, and, and, and the basement flooded uh, and um, I, I, didn't, I got demoted at the job uh, and um, yeah, just keep adding whatever you need to add to that. This is, this is what he's talking about. Yet I will rejoice in my Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Habakkuk's loyal. No matter what's going on, I'm going to stick with God. It's so easy to come to God when things are tough. It's not so easy when things are easy. But it just doesn't come to mind as much, does it? And yet, if we come to God in the easy stuff, it'll be easier to come to God in the hard stuff. This is loyalty. To accomplish the faith that James lays out means to continue life in the same direction. Loyal. What needs to shift in your world to have that kind of loyalty to God? Where, where have you recently kind of forgotten about God? Because even when we don't include God in our decision or, or, or we don't think about God or we prioritize other stuff for a little while, do you know what? God's still loyal. God's still faithful. One of the songs uh, we did, uh, well, I, I think it was the special, uh, had uh, It Is Well With My Soul. What a great old hymn. And, and Horatio Spafford, who wrote that hymn, uh, talks about uh, all the, the, you know, even when sea billows roll and, and, and you know, when life comes at me, I, I remember all the words right now, but, but life is difficult, life is bad. Horatio Spafford was a real estate mogul, basically, uh, who lost almost everything in the great Chicago fire. And uh, he, part of his response was, you know what, we just, we kind of need to get away. So he sent his wife, and I believe it was four daughters, on a, on a steaming steamer ship over to England. And he gets word a few weeks later from his wife that the ship has gone down and all the daughters have perished. So Horatio Spafford gets a ticket on, on the next one. And, uh, and he says to the captain, he says, uh, he says I, I want you to wake me when we get to the spot. And, and he basically pens this hymn. It is well with my soul. No matter what's going on. No matter what's happening. This is what James is challenging us to. James is saying, if you want faith to work, <laughs> then it's got to work in the trials and, and the difficulties. And it's a cooperative process. I got faith, and, and God's going to be faithful, so my faith, even just a little bit, is connected to gr a great person, a great object of faith. But God says, now I need you to work with it. Faith that works. This is what helps us live life in the same direction, no matter what's happening in our world. What needs to shift in your life? Faith and life are about God, not about us. How can you honor God with your life today? Let's pray together. God, we're grateful for the grace that is ours. Because, God, our hearts are all too easily uh, swayed and attracted to the shortcut that doesn't really exist.
So God, help us to, to persevere, to be faithful. To moment by moment, day by day, live life in the same direction. Help us, God, to be faithful and loyal to you as you are loyal and faithful to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.